Sarah. Hello. Merry Christmas, oh, Mrs. Costello. Merry Christmas. Sarah's home. <laughs> now it's Christmas. Hey there, kiddo. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I'll catch up with you later, Mrs. Yes. Costello. God bless you, hon. You go oh, on. Give me a hug. I miss mm. you. Oh. Of course, your mother wouldn't let us decorate the tree until you got home. Mm -hmm. But I've got hot chocolate on the stove. Perfect. Come on. Come on. It's a little cold. Just <laughs> watch your step there. It's awful slippery. Oh, it's so nice to have you home. You know, I can't believe that it's been three years since we spent Christmas together. Neither can I. Sounds like that law firm really kept you hopping up there. That's how they do things at Chandler, Abbott, and Jonas, always on call 24 7, even holidays. You know, we're really sorry to hear about you and Richard. You two seem so happy together. <sighs> Richard's a very nice guy. Just turned out we wanted different things in life. So what's that truck supposed to get here with the rest of your stuff? Day after tomorrow. You know, you could always stay here. I mean, your old room's just sitting up there. Thanks, Mom. But I'm pretty sure my old room isn't the best place to start my own practice. She's got a point, Abby. Well, you can't blame me for trying. But I found a great place right in town. It's not far. And it even has a spare bedroom I can use as an office until I get things going. That's going to be quite a change for you. That hotshot law firm in D.C. Believe me, Dad, I've had enough swimming with the sharks to last a lifetime. And all you gotta do is sit back, relax, and let us spoil you a little bit. Thank you. At least until you're ready to hang out your shingle. So, what do you think? I think we're ready. All set. One, two, three. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. Merry Christmas, kiddo. Christmas, Mr. Landis. Remember me? Sarah Wright. Merry Christmas. Here we go again. He's still doing this. A week before Christmas, like clockwork, it's the same thing every year. I used to love it when I was little. From my bedroom at night, it looked like the tree was floating up there, like some sort of beacon. <laughs> Should I help him? Since when has Dale Landis ever let anybody help him put up that tree? <laughs> Dale, you're going to break your full neck one of these days. Should have bought that man a net years ago. Either that or a trampoline. <laughs> I think it looks nice. Oh, what I don't understand is why he keeps doing it year after year. I mean, he knows darn well what's going to happen. It's like he doesn't care. He doesn't. become a bit of a Christmas tradition around Rosedale. Some towns have Christmas pageants, others have Candy Cane Lane. We've got Dale Landis.
Oh, gosh. It feels like forever. Mm, I know it has been way too long, but look at you. You look great. And this place is amazing. That's right. You haven't been home since we opened. Mm -mm, but I've been reading awesome things about it online. Lord love the internet. Did you ever think when we were in school that I'd end up being a chef? When we were in school, who knew that you could cook? So good to have you home for Christmas. Your parents must be over the moon. You have no idea. Come on, so, like, how's it going? Tell me everything. You okay? Yeah, yeah, you know. No regrets leaving that fast-track law firm of yours? It was time. You hear from Richard? Ugh. Let's just say that ship has sailed. Then maybe I'll keep an eye out to find you a new shipmate. <laughs> uh, I'm actually on an extended leave of absence from the rocky world of romance, so thanks, but no thanks. Okay. I'll just have to cook you a five-star meal instead. I like where this is going. If you need anything, anything at all, just ask. Thanks, Jess. Come on, let's sit down. I have seen you stare at that courthouse in exactly the same way since you were a little girl. Judge Connor. <laughs> For all these years, I wondered what mysteries were hitting behind those bright young eyes of yours. No mysteries, just the same questions. As long as you're never satisfied with the same old answers. You haven't changed a bit. And you're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> How are you, Judge? Well, I'm OK, except I seem to be the last person on Earth to find out that you're oh, moving home. Oh, I was going to come by. Yeah, and that you've left Chandler, Abbott, and Jonas to open your own practice? I see my parents have been talking to you. Well, as a matter of fact, I got a call from Carl Jonas. Your old boss asked if I would try and talk you out of leaving. Mr. Jonas called you himself? Well, he seemed to think you've got a promising future with his firm. According to him, they were going to renew your contract with the promotion. It was a good offer. Which you declined. What did you tell him? Well, I told him that if my favorite young protege turned down his offer, she must have a pretty good reason. It wasn't about the money. With you, it never was. Now, look, I'm due in court. Why don't you come by my chambers tomorrow, and we'll talk some more. I'd like that. All right, I'll get Marcy to phone over to the diner and order some sandwiches. You still like tuna salad? How do you remember? <laughs> How many times did you come and visit me when you were in law school, huh? You never ate anything else? <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't forget the pickle. Mr. Landis, you've got 48 hours. Mm. Mom, this is so delicious. I forgot how much I missed your cooking. Wait to see what's on the menu for Christmas dinner. I assume you've invited the entire town again? Your mother cut back this year. She's only inviting half the town. <laughs> ha ha, you two. <sighs> mm. I saw someone posting a notice on Dale Landis's door today. He had a police officer with him. They didn't waste much time, did they? What's going on? He's from the city. He was serving Dale with a court order to take the tree down. What? Why? They say it's a building code violation. Mm. A serious fire hazard, which makes it a danger to him and everyone else in the neighborhood. Dale Landis has been putting that tree on his roof every year since I was nine years old. A lot's changed since the last time you were home for dinner, sweetie. Changed how? Well, when you were growing up, nobody minded that Dale put a tree on his roof. You know, it looked nice and didn't hurt anyone. Back then, everyone in the neighborhood knew Dale, so even if he didn't talk about it much, we all had a pretty good idea of just how difficult it was for him around the holidays without his family. I remember that night when his family left. I felt so sad for him. He just looked so lost. Yeah, he was, honey. He still is. What do you mean? They always had less and less to say in the last few years. He hardly leaves that house. And it's starting to fall down around him. The only time that we're sure to see him is when Christmas comes around and he puts that tree up. The man just wants to be left alone. We've had a lot of people move into the neighborhood, and they're nice and cordial, but 
You know, they don't really know Dale. Every year, that tree goes up and it starts up all over again. Someone complains. And even if they don't, I'm pretty sure that Dale is on the city's radar by now. They show up with that court order like clockwork. And he has to take the tree down. Not exactly. What? He won't take it down? But it's a court order. Either he takes the tree down or he's going to wind up in... Yep. Wait, seriously? Mm-hmm. The last three years, Dale Landis has spent Christmas in jail. And by the sounds of it, that's where he's headed again. Over a Christmas tree? But why? Well, nobody knows. Well, has anyone asked him? Oh, sure. I mean, every year when he appears in court, Sam Connor asks him the same question. And he gets the same answer. Because he likes the way it looks. That makes absolutely no sense. It does to Dale. Exactly. Doesn't matter if he was sleeping. He woke up when his buddies got back in. Yeah, give me a break. Of course they knew each other. They went for burgers afterwards. Yeah, oh, well, we got him with the surveillance camera. I know. Cameras everywhere. Yeah, what's the world coming to you? Yeah, all right, yeah. Nothing's written to stone. I'll talk to you later. But now. Hey, don't give up now. You're setting a great pace. Really in sync there. See ya. Yeah, Steve, we both know I can't take that offer to my boss. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. yeah, excuse me. Just, just open the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know. Well, because he'd make Santa Claus put coal in my stockings. Excuse me, I'm just, just open the door. Yeah, yeah. All right, call me later. Yeah, I need an offer I can work with, though, Steve. Okay, excuse me. Just... Yeah, hi there. I didn't see you up here. What are you doing? I mean, I'm buying you a cup of coffee. No, you're not. You're cutting in line. Uh, look, just work with me here. I'm running a little late. Excuse me? Look, everything's on me. The muffins are really great. They make them fresh here. You know, it's bad enough with guys like you. Your phone calls are so important. We all have to listen. Wait, guys like me? But heaven forbid you should have to wait in line like everybody else. No, look, wait, wait a second. Hi, what can I get for you? A single tone on fat latte, please. And you, sir. Oh, no, I'm no, like... we're not together. We are. We're no, no, we're not. We're not together. We're not together. Yeah. Thank you. Unbelievable. Hey, Dad. Hey, kiddo. Your mom's out. Said she had to run some errands 
Mm, which is code for Christmas shopping. <laughs> She'll be back in a couple hours. I just wanted to say hi. I'm meeting Judge Connor for lunch. Ah, my gold times. Yeah. You just finishing that up? Yep, just about there. Mm. Hey, Dad, do you ever miss being a lawyer? I mean, it was 20 years ago. I know, but do you ever regret leaving law? I suppose if I miss anything, it's that feeling when everything comes together. You know, when the system works, and you feel like you really made a difference. Yeah. Mm. Something on your mind, sir? I was just thinking about something you said. I must have been nine or ten. It was Christmas. And I asked you if you didn't like being a lawyer anymore. And you said, you said that you found something you liked better, something that made you happy. Yep, that was a big leap of faith. What do you mean? I wanted to build furniture. This is what makes me happy. You know? Being a lawyer was, well, I didn't have the passion for it. Not like you do. So there I was, walking away from a job. And your mother and I had to start over again, risking our home, our future. Were you nervous? I was petrified. I'm not gonna kid you, times were tough for a while. We really had to tighten our belts. A lot of people thought I was crazy when I set up out here. But how can you be sure that you made the right choice? You can't, not completely. But that's when you need to look in your heart and trust what you feel there. Beautiful, Dad. Mm. Thanks, honey. Okay. I gotta get ready. All right. I'll see you later on. See ya. I'm a little early. Oh, that's fine. He's got somebody in there, but they'll be done soon. I understand we're gonna be seeing a lot more of you around here. Looks that way. Well, if I hear of anybody needing a good attorney, I'll be sure to send them your way. Thank you, Marcy. <laughs> okay, Sarah. Okay, keep me posted. We'll get to the bottom of it, okay? I, said, I will. I will. Sarah, good. Someone I want you to meet. This is John Keaton. John, this is Sarah Wright. We have got to stop meeting like this. Well, you two know each other? No. Uh, but not for lack of trying. It's a pleasure. John is the deputy prosecuting attorney for the county. Been with us almost a year, doing a dandy job. Thank you, Judge. Sarah is the pride and joy of Rosedale. Top of her class at law school, four years with Chandler Abbott and Jonas. Wow, running with the big dogs. But we have the great good fortune of having her back home now. Oh, I look forward to seeing you at work. Nice meeting you. Judge Marcy. Deputy prosecuting attorney? Well, he knows his stuff. I don't doubt it, but what is a guy like that doing in our little town? Oh, I didn't ask. But whatever brought him here, he seems to like it. Which is just fine by me. That dog can hunt. Yeah, believe me, I know the type. He's all about the job. First one in, last one out, and it is the only thing he really loves. Shall we go in? Hi, Marilyn. There you go, lunch. All right. I remember the first time you came in here, skinny little thing. You sat right there and you told me you were going to be a lawyer. And I thought you were here for my sage advice. That was part of it. No, what you really wanted from me was for me to ask you why you were going to become a lawyer. Hmm? Even back then, you weren't afraid of the hard questions. Yeah, as I recall, you didn't pull any punches either. Well, from that day forward, I never have, not with you. Something tells me we're not just taking a walk down memory lane here, are we? If you tell me you've thought this through, that you're clear in your head about coming home, I'll mind my own business. Seems like these days I'm not very clear about much of anything. What do you mean? I never set out to change the world, Judge. I just wanted to make a difference. 
for the better. But you have made a difference. You gave your clients their day in court, helped them find justice. But that's just it. The longer I do this, the more I realize it isn't about justice or what's right. It's about winning. Hmm. Sometimes it can feel like that, yeah. What are we supposed to do? I... I'm not naive. I know the law is never black and white, but that gray area just keeps getting bigger. We keep trading off and compromising, making these deals that sometimes they don't even make sense. How am I supposed to explain that to someone who has put their faith in me? How am I supposed to just sit back and watch while these good people are made to feel that their day in court was just a lot of haggling? It's not justice. And it's not right. And I'm tired of it. Why'd you leave Chandler Abbott? A woman and her children were being kicked out of their apartment. The owner wanted to convert the building into a co-op. She couldn't afford it, and I wanted to take the case. I thought I could stall him at least long enough so they wouldn't be out on the street for Christmas. Was the eviction legal? It's Christmas, Judge. She had three kids and nowhere to go. Counselor? Of course it was legal. The owner was our client. <laughs> You want to take a case against your own law firm? Technically. Yes. But I would have done it on my own time. Pro bono. And of course they said no. So you quit. It wasn't just that case, Judge. I've been feeling this way for a long time, and I couldn't stay there anymore. I don't even know if I can... If you can what? I don't even know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I can be a lawyer. Oh, I see. I hope... I hope that you're not too disappointed in me. You've been blessed with a rare gift, Sarah. A good heart and a legal mind, and that's what makes you a very fine lawyer and an even better person. You could never disappoint me. But the hardest part of what we do is to finally admit to ourselves that we can't save everyone. Right now, I would be happy with saving just one. Maybe that's what brought you home again. What? Looking for that one case, that one client to restore your faith. I wish I could believe that. But it's a season for believing. What better time to find out? Who knows? Maybe you'll change the world after all. Or maybe just our little corner of it. I should have thought of that before I started taking a joyride. Oh, come on, Sid. Don't take it But you threw that away. Uh, yeah, no. That was just for a dramatic effect. Just to show you that I was listening. Very convincing. So are you. Really? Absolutely. You know, you're right. I should be more considerate towards other people. Mm, yeah. No. Too sincere? A little bit. Yeah, I can never get that right. Listen, you seem like a very nice guy, I'm sure. And you're even funny-ish in a cocky sort of way. Thank you. Not really a compliment. Anyway, <clears throat> the point is, you don't have to work so hard. Because this, right here, is not going to happen, so. Oh, OK. Good to know. Uh, though, actually, I just wanted to share your table. <laughs> what? Right. 
But I'm glad we got all that other stuff out of the way first, you know. Just to be clear. Sit. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm... Listen, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have <clears throat> said that. I... It's been a bit of a tough week. Tough year. Does that have anything to do with why you moved back home? Let's just say this is the one place that still makes sense to me. Oh, well, that would explain a lot. It would. Yeah, well, I mean, people don't just walk away from Chandler, Abbott, and Jonas. I mean, that place is mythic. People are lined up around the block to get jobs so there. So why would anyone leave all of that just to move back here? I don't know, why would anyone trade all this to go work there? What? Yeah, well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I can see the appeal, you know, huge career bump and perks like crazy, but yeah, it's not for everybody. Hang on a second, are you, are you doing that sincere thing <laughs> again? Because I'm getting all turned around here. No, 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 I'm, I'm serious. You know, I, I like it here. This is, it's the kind of town I used to be curious about when I grew up. Why? Well, when I was a kid, my, my parents moved around a lot. They never really set up roots anywhere. Don't ask me why. It's like they were always looking for something. Did they ever find it? <laughs> yeah, you can't really find what you don't know. But the whole time, I kept imagining a place like Rosedale, a place where people knew each other and you know, just helped each other out. Yeah. Yeah, this must have been a great place to grow up. Hmm. Especially at Christmas. And this is going to be my first Christmas here. I heard they do it up right. Oh, we have a big tree lighting ceremony right in the square. Mm -hmm. The whole town comes out. We sing carols, drink hot cider. Santa always makes an appearance. That sounds beautiful. It really is. John Keaton. <laughs> I should I should take this outside. Very good. Okay. We'll see you later. See you later. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> This place is so great, Sarah. Now I just have to figure out where to put everything. Hi, Jess! Mrs. Wright! Oh, Mr. Wright. Uh, it's always a good sign when Jessica shows up with food. It's a housewarming gift. My smoky butternut squash Christmas soup. Perfect. When do we eat? Oh, hey. I passed your neighbor on the way over here. Mr. Landis? Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen him on his bicycle. Probably about a year. What do you mean? Remember when we said that Dale doesn't get out much anymore? So if he's riding into town at Christmas, he's headed for the courthouse. Because of the tree. Once the order goes on his door, he has 48 hours to take the tree down. If he doesn't, he has to appear in court. And he always shows up. And he always says no. Do you mean Judge Connor is going to put him in jail today? No, Sam will give him a few more days to think about it. Not that it makes any difference. Well, what does his attorney say? Dale doesn't have a lawyer. Says he doesn't need one. Wait, what? Well, Sam tried to assign him a public defender, but he wanted no part of it. How can he understand what's happening without an attorney? That's like asking to go to jail. Which some people believe is the whole point. That he's just a lonely man looking for attention. Others think there's really something wrong with him. But he's not all there anymore. Well, what do you think? I think every Christmas story should have a happy ending. I just don't think that's the way this one's gonna turn out. Do you guys mind holding down the fort for a little while? Where are you going? I think I want to hear this Christmas story for myself. Excuse me.
Well, sorry, Mr. Miller, but we don't have a lot of room to move here. We're gonna have to ask you to pay the fine after all. All right. Well, now, let's see if we can't move on to the next case. Oh, Mr. Landis, how are you, my friend? I'm okay, Your Honor. Thank you. H how are you, sir? Oh, just fine. And a Merry Christmas to you. Ah, Merry Christmas, sir. <laughs> Wouldn't be Christmas without a visit from you to our courtroom, would it? No, sir, I guess not. I see that you have again violated the town's building codes by placing a Christmas tree on your roof. Yes, sir. And you received the court's order to take the tree down? Yes, sir, I did. Huh. I take it you have no intention of doing so, huh? No, sir, I, I won't be doing that. Yeah. I gather you have once again decided to appear in court without benefit of counsel. I'll be just fine, Your Honor. I want to remind you, Dale, that once these wheels are set in motion, we're obliged by law to follow through on this. Yes, sir. I understand. If you don't take the tree down, I have to put you in jail. Oh. Yeah, I understand, sir. Okay. All right, Mr. Keaton, it's all yours. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. In the matter of the town of Rosedale versus Dale Landis, defendant is accused of being in violation of the following town and uh, county codes. Uh, uh, Mr. Keaton, uh, most of us here have been down this road a few times. Why don't we just stipulate the violations and we can move it along a bit? Yes, sir. All right. For the past three years, the defendant has ignored identical court orders to comply with the town's building and security codes. We don't think this is going to be any different this year. Oh, agreed. The people request an immediate court date for Mr. Landis and a fine of $5,000 for each day the tree remains on his roof. That's a little steep, don't you think? Your Honor, this has been going on for four years now. I think it's about time the defendant took it seriously. Mr. Landis, you do understand that this Christmas tree of yours could end up being very expensive? I don't have any money, Your Honor. Well, then I suggest you take the tree down. I'm sorry. I can't do that. Why not? <sighs> yeah. Your Honor, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I just like the way the tree looks up there. Your Honor. Oh, trust me. Nobody would enjoy hearing an answer to your question more than I would. This is just part of our annual tradition, isn't it, Dale? Yes, sir, I guess it is. In that case, Your Honor, I request the court order a psychiatric evaluation of the defendant to determine his competency to accept these charges. It's. It, it's a Christmas tree, Mr. Keaton. It's a matter of public safety, Your Honor. I'll take it under advisement. Mr. Landis, the clerk will assign you a court date at which time I'll rule on Mr. Keaton's motion. In the meantime, I, th I think you should think very carefully about what you're going to do now. It's not just a matter of another night in jail anymore, Dale. Yes, sir. Okay. Our court's adjourned. Yeah, okay. Hey, hey, I want to talk to you. Hey, Sarah. What was all that about? Excuse me? A psychiatric evaluation? Seriously? Oh, I didn't know you were in there. No, no, no. There is nothing wrong with Dale Landis, okay? He's just a little bit lonely. And you know this because? Because he lives across the street from me. Wait, you're actually neighbors with the Christmas tree guy? You're smiling. Why are you smiling? How is this funny? It's not. No, I just, this is what I mean about small towns. I, I think it's great that everyone knows each other. It's not that small. And I didn't say I know everyone, just him. And there is nothing wrong with him, OK? Look, I'm sorry, but I can't talk about an ongoing case not out here like this. It's not my first rodeo, cowboy. Don't try and pull that can't discuss it lawyer brush off line with me. 
What? You don't want to talk about it because we both know you pulled out your big guns way too fast. All right, you want to discuss this, Counselor? Step into my office. My pleasure. The fact that defendant's your neighbor doesn't change a thing. Look, there has to be more going on here. I know that Dale Landis isn't crazy. He's been breaking these laws for years. It doesn't seem to matter to him. Sure it matters. So he doesn't mind spending Christmas in jail? Of course not. He would just rather spend Christmas in jail than take down his tree. And this to you sounds like the decision of a rational man. It's a zoning code, OK? It's not like he robbed a bank. It's the law. And as long as I'm in that courtroom, my job is to enforce that law. It's not that simple. It couldn't be simpler. Right is right, and wrong is wrong. It's just the way it is, Sarah, whether we like it or not. What about people? What about having faith in your fellow man? You know, trying to look a little bit closer at the things that they do so we can understand them better, especially now at Christmas. How do you think he feels being all alone like that when everyone around you is celebrating with family and friends? Look, I appreciate what you're doing. But I have faith in the law, not people. Law makes a lot more sense to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Up there straightening the tray. Look, it's leaning to the right. Yeah. Well, at least you put green on the bottom. What are you two it? doing out here? It's oh, cold. Hi. Just in case. Yeah. In case of what? In case we have to call 911. Is he taking it down? <laughs> don't, don't, don't be silly, dear. It's crooked. You can't have a crooked Christmas tree on your roof, or <sighs> the neighbors say. <laughs> oh, how did the court go today? Not good. You know, I hate to think of him spending another Christmas in jail. That's why I came over, to try and talk to him. Good luck, honey. Hey, why don't you two go back inside where it's warm? I will call if there are any emergencies. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks. Mr. Landis? You okay up there? Uh-huh. Your tree looks really nice. Haven't seen it for a while. It's just the way I remember it. Thank you. Mr. Landis, could I talk to you for a second about what happened in the courthouse today? What about it? Well, it's just that, um... You see, I, I think that... <laughs> this would be a lot easier if I didn't have to shout. <laughs> Okay. I can do this. I can do this. So, uh, looks straight to you? Yeah, yeah, that looks, that looks great. You, uh, used to have this shiny blue soccer ball. Used to kick it around in the yard all the time. That was a long time ago. Yeah. There was this time when, uh, you kicked it across the street and in, in our yard. Then you came over to, to get it, my son, Danny. He thought that ball was something. And, well, you played with him and that ball for a long, long time. I remember. I never did thank you for that. It was nice that you did that. How is Danny? He's fine, just, just fine. Mr. Landis, <clears throat> did, did you understand what the deputy prosecuting attorney said in the court today? You mean that part about that 
He doesn't think my head's on straight. Well, that's... We all know that's not true. But he's not from around here. And he likes to play hardball, so... Just doing his job. It could get very complicated. You know, you should really have an attorney. I'll be fine. Mr. Landis. I really appreciate you coming up here to talk to me, Sarah. But I'm, uh... I'm doing just fine. I don't need any help. Thank you. Well, maybe you could help me. How's that? Like I said, I, I've been away for a while, and I'm trying to set up my own law practice. But, you know, get, getting that first client, it's... it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Maybe if it would be all right with you, I could just sit with you in court, and, you know, we could tell people you're my client, that I'm representing your case, but I wouldn't have to do anything. Not if you don't want me to. You figure that would help you with your law business? It would be a big help. But you wouldn't join up with the with the judge and that other fellow trying to make me take this tree down. Not if you don't want to. You were always nice to Danny. I guess it'll be all right. Thank you, Mr. Landis. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We'll have a white Christmas? It looks like it. Isn't it great how we can banter like this? Do you really intend to give Dale Landis a psych evaluation? <laughs> okay, that's not banter. That's more like shop talk. Because you know you can't have it both ways. All right, what do you mean? You can't question his competency and charge him $5,000 a day for leaving the tree up. Why not? Doesn't wash. Either he knows what he's doing or he doesn't. You can't penalize someone if they're not responsible for their actions. Wow, not bad. Make up your mind, counselor. Hold on, is this your way of saying you represent Landis now? That's right. How'd you get him to change his mind? He still doesn't want a lawyer, but he was happy to have a friend. Nice bantering with you. You're telling me Dale has agreed to this? He wants you to represent him? Let's just say we've come to an understanding. Uh, would this understanding involve him taking that tree down and staying out of jail? I think first I need to figure out why he puts it up. Oh, I've been waiting a long time to solve that little Christmas mystery. Has he ever mentioned his family in court? Well, not that I recall. He has a son, doesn't he? Danny. He moved away with his mother when he was very young. Hmm. I tried to look him up online, but there is no record of a Daniel Landis from Rosedale. No way of knowing where he is, or even if he's alive or dead. Why are you trying to find him? This man has no one, Judge Connor. He's all alone, and I thought if I could just find someone, a family member, someone he could trust, he might listen to them. Hey, Marcy, yeah. do me a favor, will you? Pull all the files on Dale Landis for the past three years. As soon as you can. I have a bright-eyed young attorney here who has some homework to do.
driver's license, no credit card, no email, no contact person. It's like outside of Christmas. He doesn't exist. Hi. Hey, um, sorry, I'm just in the middle of something here. Yeah, I figured that. Hot fresh cider. You've been here for hours, you work right through dinner. I did? Thought you might need a break. Uh, hang on a second. How do you know how long I've been here? Are you following me now or something? As fascinating as you may be, no, I haven't been watching you. I thought, um, maybe, um, I never mind. Bad idea. <clears throat> hang on. I, I just get a little cranky when I'm hungry. I had a feeling so. Hold this. Tuna salad, right? How did you? I sometimes eat at the diner. I overheard Marcy take your the other day. Apparently, you have a long history of tuna salad sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Um, why are you doing this? Those Landis's files? Yeah. Yeah, but the other day, um, I didn't mean to lecture you on the law, especially when it comes to Landis. I know he's more than just uh, another case for you. I got a little caught up. I do that sometimes. I'm sorry. Thank you. I get a little caught up sometimes, too. Really? <laughs> <laughs> You noticed. Uh, yeah. You know, when I'm in that courtroom, uh, I have to do everything I can to win that case. You know that, including this one. I do. And you have to do everything you can to help out your client. So things are going to get kind of sticky before this is over. Yeah. And when they do, I just want you to remember that uh, this sandwich is a token of our professional respect. Okay. And that I envy your faith in other people. You do. Yeah, I might be a, a pretty good lawyer, but I don't have much luck in that department. Especially at Christmas. One half. On one condition. We don't discuss the case. Agreed. Okay. Good night, Barney. together all through law school. It was fine, but I should have seen it coming. The signs were all there. Such as? Oh, such as she took a job in D.C. the day after we graduated and then stopped returning my texts and calls. <laughs> yeah, she realized at that time our days were numbered. Mm. And since then? Since then. Well, it turns out not everyone relates to my love for small town life. Mm. You know, working in a place like Rosedale doesn't exactly fit their visions of success. They don't know what they're missing. How about you? You want to keep the home fires burning? No. I give up on that. Oh, please. I mean, not as a permanent situation. It's just dating in the city is way too exhausting. Like, the past four years have been all about money and titles and connections and Winning. Mostly winning. Mm. No matter what. Guys like me, in other words? Nothing like you. You know, that may be the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> well, this is me. So, um, guess I'll see you in court tomorrow? Yeah.
night. Good night. Uh, Sarah. And what I said before about the sandwich, I meant it. I'm impressed. You've got your first case already. Yeah, only on the condition that I do and say nothing to keep my client out of jail. He'll change his tune. Mm, I wouldn't be so sure. How can he say no to the best lawyer in town? <laughs> Who's doing it for free, I might add? The same way he said no to everyone else. And you know, as for being the best, the deputy prosecuting attorney is no slouch, believe me. So, you've met John Keaton. Oh, you know him? Not exactly. He comes into my restaurant sometimes. So he has good taste, too. Why, thank you. It's all very mysterious, though. What do you mean? Well, whenever he comes in, he's always with the same attractive young woman. Really? Mm hmm She must be from out of town, I assume. That's the only time I ever see her. That would make sense. He hasn't lived in our little town very long, and he doesn't realize that people notice these things. I'm sure you're right. <laughs> All rise. Be seated. Ms. Wright, I see you've joined us. Welcome, as always. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, let's get right to it, shall we? Dale, I don't suppose you've given us an early Christmas present by taking that tree down? Uh, no, Your Honor, I haven't. And I gather you still have no intention of doing so? No, sir. Hmm. Mr. Keaton. Your Honor, upon further review, the prosecution has decided to withdraw the motion to find Mr. Landis every day the tree is on top of his house. Oh, I like the way this is starting out. So noted. Did you hear that, Dale? The prosecution is dropping the fine. Uh, I appreciate it. However, the defendant continues to be in violation of several building codes, and in doing so presents a clear danger to himself and in the community. Uh, I would never hurt anybody, Your Honor. No one, really, never. Uh, uh, let him finish. Therefore, Your Honor, we ask that you rule on a request for immediate psychiatric evaluation to determine the competency of the defendant, as well as authorize the immediate enforcement of the court order to take the tree down. Dale, you understand that one way or another that tree's coming down. I really wish you wouldn't do that, Your Honor. With all due respect, Your Honor, the defendant's wishes have no relevance here. Your Honor, the wishes of the defendant are precisely what this case is all about. Your Honor, excuse me, if I could finish my point. It was Mr. Landis's wish to place the tree on his roof. It was his wish to keep it on his roof. And it must have also been his wish to break the law. The prosecution has made it clear that this case is no longer just about the law. It is about the defendant's understanding of the law. I understand the law just fine, Your Honor. I just don't want to take down my tree. I, I think they're on to something else here, Dale. Yeah, they seem pretty steamed about it. Oh, yes, they do. Your Honor, um, I'm confused. Who am I speaking to here? Is Mr. Landis representing himself, or is Ms. Wright now arguing his case? Fair question, Ms. Wright. Mr. Landis has agreed to let me assist him, Your Honor. What does that mean? In the case of Dooley versus the state of Washington, Raymond Dooley declined to be represented by an attorney. What? However, when his competency was questioned, the court ruled that while he had the right to refuse representation, he could be assigned an advisor. An advisor, you mean something like uh, an attorney? They weren't there to represent him. They were there to interpret and uh, clarify the law, so to speak. What's the difference? It's right there. Read it for yourself. You don't have to read it. You're talking about semantics. Excuse me? Like you're either his lawyer or you're not. Doesn't make any sense. It makes more sense than putting him back in jail, doesn't it? He knew he was going to go there when he put the tree back up. Well, at least he didn't start making up stories about his tree to try and impress people. Excuse me? You too, my chambers, right now. This court's in recess for 10 minutes. Okay, what was that all about? You think I'm making up stories about something? I think you would do anything to win this case. I'm not the one pulling rabbits out of my hat. Dooley versus the state of Washington? <laughs> Please. Are you questioning my citation? I'm questioning your cheap shot. I... All right, neutral corners. Your Honor, 
She's obviously trying to help out her neighbor, whether he wants it or not. Do you even know what we're talking about here? Have you even been to see the tree? What's that got to do with anything? Your Honor, Dale Landis has been putting a tree on his roof since I was a little girl. I used to look forward to seeing it from my bedroom window every year. Wait, how long has this guy been getting away with this? The point is, while what he does may be technically illegal... Technically? It is also beautiful. And in some way that none of us can understand, it makes him happy. But that does not make him crazy, and I will not let the prosecution make him think he is. Your Honor, the law clearly states Oh, that... I'm familiar with the law, Mr. Keaton. But you're right. The law is quite clear on this point. But, Your Honor... However, Ms. Wright has also made a point. Whatever the legal issues here, Mr. Landis is harmless. Which leads me to believe that we must be missing something. There must be a different solution. Such as? No idea. Which is why I'm putting you in charge of finding that solution. You are? Mm -hmm. And you're going to help her, John. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, whoa, wait, 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 wait. You two are going to work this out together. And the next time I see you, I want to hear that you've found a way to satisfy the courts and Mr. Landis' dreams for a happy and healthy Christmas. <clears throat> wait a second. If I... you two put as much effort into sorting this out as you do sniping at each other, you're going to bring a lot of Christmas cheer into my courtroom. Your Honor, I have a full caseload. For which I will give you a full continuance. Hmm? Your only concern right now is to create a Christmas miracle. Any questions? Good. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I want this resolved before then. Otherwise, Mr. Landis spends another Christmas in jail. And we don't want that, do we? I really... Wait, wait. Sir. Wait. No, sir. All right. Off you go. Play nice. <clears throat> Nice. He was talking to you. You want to tell me what I did? Let's just get through this. Fine. Any ideas? You? I'll get the files. I'll get the coffee. Okay. You want neighbors' complaints or building codes? Well, your neighborhood. I'll take the building codes. Where's that coming from? I think it's the town square. Oh, no. They're lighting the tree. That's tonight. Oh, I completely forgot about it. I've been looking forward to this for years. And now I'm gonna miss it. Come on. But we haven't found anything yet. I think it's all gonna be here when we get back. Do you wanna see it or not? It's just 
like I remember. This is home. This is where I learned to put my faith in people. You're lucky. We can't stay long. As soon as they light the tree, we should head back. Well, I thought you wanted to... We don't have time. Sir, what... Like, what's... What's going on? I, I don't understand. I, I know we're off to a rocky start, but... I, I thought... I thought you liked the sandwich. It's a small town, John. Yeah, I, I figured so. The restaurant that you like, the Boston Bistro, mm -hmm. my best friend is the chef there. OK, it's good food. So? So she remembers you coming in, OK? Ah, uh, guys, still don't. Uh, am I a bad tipper? She also remembers. There she is, Sarah, honey. Hey Hi. there, kiddo. <laughs> we were looking all over for you. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, uh, I had to work late. I told your father that you wouldn't miss this for the world. No, you're right. <laughs> John Keaton. Hi. Hello. John is the deputy prosecuting attorney. These are my parents. Nice to meet you. Keaton, Judge Connor tells me you're handling Dale Landis's case. That's right. You got your hands full there. Yeah, well, we're actually handling it together now try to straighten things out. Sarah, did you convince Dale into letting you be his lawyer? Uh, no, not exactly. It was the judge's idea, actually, to try and keep Mr. Landis from spending another Christmas in jail. Well, I hope it works. Yeah, so do we. Uh, you know, I should... There's something I need to take care of. Excuse me. Uh, I'll come by tomorrow. Love you. Honey, they're gonna light the tree. What was that all about? Uh, sir, I should probably go help her with that thing. Um, it was really nice to meet you both. Excuse me. Her name's Emily. What? The woman your friend saw me with in the restaurant. It's none of my business, John. Well, probably not, but just for the record, she's my little sister. Your sister? Yeah, she's a senior in college. She's really busy, which is why I can't see her that often. But when she can come visit, she loves your friend's restaurant. John, I... I thought that... I'm sorry. Hey. Look, I haven't lied to you, Sarah. I never will. My sister's what brought me to Rosedale. She was the reason I took the job. What do you mean? Well, since her family moved around so much, it was, um, felt like it was just her and I. I was a big brother, so 
You know, I'd take care of her. What about your parents? They made sure we were okay in a sort of, uh, how do you say, non committal sort of way. What? I, know, I guess looking back on it, they liked the idea of kids a lot more than the actual day to day reality. John, that must have been so hard for you and your sister. Yeah. But it did give me a lot of time to figure things out. And I figured out pretty quickly that if someone says, trust me, you got to watch your back. <laughs> That's not always true, you know. Yeah, maybe not. But when you're a little kid looking after your little sister, the first thing you learn is that no one's going to hand you what you need. You got to you gotta go out there and get it. Yeah, I guess it kind of stuck with me over the years, especially when it comes to Emily. So you came here so she would know what it felt like to have a real home. You know, you remind me of her. Really? She has a lot of faith in people, too. Well, why wouldn't she? She had you. <laughs> I guess it's time to call it a night, huh? Actually, it's morning. Ugh, we're no closer than when we started. We'll find something. Yeah, I don't know. You know, this Lannis thing has been going on for so long. I can't believe no one's tried this already. And, and what if we do find some sort of loophole? I mean, how do we know Lannis won't want to, you know, come along with it? John. Yeah, I'm going to think we're going to need a real Christmas miracle <laughs> to get, keep him out John, of jail. did you see this? What? Central Valley Drug Mart versus Springfield County. They had a platform on their roof with some sort of big promotional display, including a tree. Oh, let me see. The county asked them to take it down, said it represented a hazard. Right, and but the judge ruled they could keep it up as long as the tree wasn't, wasn't attached, attached to the, the roof. roof. Show me this tree. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? Who are you? I'm Mr. Landis's attorney. Who authorized you to take down that tree? Well, the county says that he doesn't follow the law and take it down. We can do it for him. Well, I'm a deputy county prosecutor, and this case is still being heard in court. Mm. Looks like we settled it for you. <laughs> oh, and uh, counselor? Um, if you could remind your client that he may still be looking at some jail time. What do you want to do? We've come this far. We can't give up now. Come on, let's go. They already pulled the tree down? Yes, sir. Well, I don't like it. But strictly speaking, I suppose they were within the law. Well, what about the court ruling on Central Valley drugs? Would it hold up in court? Does it apply? Well, I think you found your loophole. But it's a moot point. The tree's no longer an issue. It is if we put it back up. What? The court ruling clearly stipulates that as long as the tree isn't attached... Oh, no, hold on, Sarah. Now, look, you did what I asked. You both worked together. You found a solution. You made sure that Mr. Landis is never going to spend another Christmas in jail. You should be proud of that. You made a difference, and justice has been served. Now, look, tonight is Christmas Eve. It's a time to be with the people you care about. All right? And that's what I want you to do, both of you. With all due respect, Your Honor, I don't think we've made any difference at all. I'm sorry? This isn't about the law or about serving justice. This is about Mr. Landis. He's still all alone in that big old house. He, he doesn't have anyone to spend Christmas with. The only thing he wanted, the only thing that means anything to him, they took down. It doesn't matter anymore why he wants that tree on his roof. 
What matters is that that is his Christmas wish. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that wish comes true. Do you know how much work it will take to get that tree back up there to code? But there's still time. If I had a little help. John, is the prosecutor's office ready to go along with this? Absolutely. All right. Well, you're going to need a building permit. Marcy, would you get me the county permits office on the phone? Yeah, yeah. Tell them we have a Christmas tree to put up. Way up. Thank you. <laughs> Right in here. Yes, we gotta go. Gotta go. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. This is perfect. It sure is. Hey, Pally, wanna grab this? Right. this. Could I talk to you for a minute? Mr. Landis? I just want you to know we're going to put your tree back up. Sarah Wright. Before you say anything, Judge Connor knows all about this. The building permit is being expedited, and it should be here any... Uh, yeah, I know. What's this? Your building permits. Judge told me to deliver it personally, with a smile. Thank you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, we got it. Thank you. So cute. Shh. I know. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, Judge Connor? Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> 
but he thought you might need some help. Come on, boys. Let's get this done. All right. <laughs> No, 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 I'm good. Oh, come on, come honey. On. No, go for it, kiddo. Come on, go. You can that's, do it. That's gonna watch it. Here, I'll grab the ladder. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Easy peasy. There you go, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you trust me? Ready. Three. Three. Two. two one. Tell Mr. Landis. Mr. Landis, we're ready. Come and see your tree. Sir? Come and take a look. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Do you like it? Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's nice. Very nice. Good night. Like, we may never understand, but you did something else here. You showed us all what a difference it can make to show a little extra faith in your fellow man. No one's gonna forget this anytime soon, especially me. Want to come in for a few minutes? I would love to, but my sister's coming in the red eye. I think I'm gonna go home. Okay. Well, listen, um, my parents throw this uh, Christmas dinner party and they invite a few friends. Actually, a lot of friends. So um, maybe you and your sister should join us. I can meet her. Yeah, I'd love that. Oh, that's a friend of yours? I don't think so. Who is that? I don't know. But whoever it is, it's the last thing Mr. Landis needs right now. Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to him. All right. Can I help you? Can I help you? Oh, uh, sorry, ma'am. I just uh, saw the tree. Wanted to just stop and look. Hope that's all right. It's OK. Do you happen to know who lives here? Yeah, that's, that's him right there, Dale Landis. Landis? Yeah. Danny? Hi, Dad. Danny! 
Danny. Danny. My son. Come. Sir, John Lee. This is my son, Danny. Danny, these are friends of mine. Good friends. Very good friends. Hi, Danny. It's been a long time. You always wanted to know why I put that tree up there every Christmas. This is the reason right here. Oh, Danny. I was just a little boy and my mother took me away. I remember it was Christmas Eve. I've made my decision. It's over. No, it's already done. We're leaving. She said we were never coming back here. And just before we left, my dad, he pulled me aside, and he told me, Look for the Christmas tree. No matter what, no matter how long it took, if I ever wanted to find him, always look for the tree. On the rooftop. On the rooftop. <laughs> so that tree really was a beacon to show your son the way home. It was my only hope. When my mom got married again, she changed my name, too. So I knew there wasn't much chance you'd find me. These last few years, I've been in the Army. But I got leave this Christmas. And as soon as I got back, I started looking. And I found you. I finally found you. Welcome home, son. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. 